Marie Antoinette was born in Vienna, Austria on November 2, 1755, the 15th of 16 children. Her mother, the Empress Maria Theresa, a powerful woman and a respected politician, arranged the marriages of all her daughters. Although nothing in Marie Antoinette's education prepared her to become queen, her fate was sealed when Schwasel, one of Louis XV's ministers, agreed to consolidate the somewhat fragile Franco-Austrian alliance. And so, on May 16, 1770 at Versailles, Marie Antoinette married Prince Louis Auguste, the future Louis XVI. When she arrived at Versailles, people praised her freshness and beauty, but the young princess found it difficult to adjust to her new life, to court gossip, and particularly the etiquette and pompous ceremonial inherited from Louis XIV. Neglected by her husband, who devoted himself to his passions of hunting, the navy, geography, and mathematics, Marie Antoinette soon found a variety of diversions to overcome her boredom. She loved the theater, music, and art, attending an endless round of events in both Versailles and Paris. In 1774, Louis XVI ascended the throne, and at 19, Marie Antoinette became Queen of France. Louis XVI gave her Le Petit Trianon, an estate which also became her refuge from the court at Versailles. No one came there unless invited by the young queen, who preferred to surround herself with friends chosen for their rapport with her rather than their rank, which scandalized the aristocracy. During the summer, the king often visited her, but never slept there. After seven long years, she gave birth to the first of four children, Marie Thérèse, known as Madame Royale. Then came the first prince, who died in childhood, followed by Prince Louis Charles, the future Louis XVII, and finally another girl who died in infancy. Nonetheless, Marie Antoinette did not change her way of life, spending lavishly on fine clothes and expensive parties. Rumor had it she was capricious, scatterbrained, and extravagant, but she was queen and wanted the best. At Trianon, the atmosphere was carefree, but beyond its gates, there were ominous murmurings. Pamphlets circulated about the Austrian woman, nicknamed Madame Deficit. But as far as the queen was concerned, nothing and nobody, apart from God, could call royal power into question. In October 1789, when the royal family was taken by force to the Tuileries, it was Marie Antoinette who called upon foreign monarchies to organize a clandestine resistance. She was assisted by Count Axel von Fersen, a handsome Swedish officer whom she had met 15 years earlier. Together, they planned an escape which ended in failure at Varennes. Held with her family in the Temple prison, she continued to communicate with the world outside but had to stand by, powerless, as Louis XVI was guillotined. She was then transferred to the conciergerie and was condemned to death nine months after her husband. On October 16, 1793, the guillotine blade fell and she became a legend. To execute Marie Antoinette because she was queen was to see her as the embodiment of the monarchy. She became its symbol, an icon of the history of France, a myth for future generations. And now, Montreux-Breguet has made restoration work possible, returning the place to its previous splendor. The house once again looks inhabited, as if the queen had only just left.